Howdy folks, William McAvoy here, also known as Data God. I want to show you my Raspberry Pi clock built with a unicorn hat. There, I'm just fiddling uh, with a flashlight on it so you can see what it looks like. So I have a Raspberry Pi Model A Plus. I have a unicorn hat attached to it. Right here, this is Pac-Man. Okay, so Pac-Man just got a score of 60 points. Now it's going to move on to the next game. Pac-Man didn't do so well on that one. So this is called Dot Zerk. Okay, the robot goes by. The time is five something. Another little robot going by. There you go. You see, it shows you the time, and then it goes on to play a cute little game by itself. Now, if you've ever played the game Berserk, you'll know that it's a huge game with so many rooms. There's robots in each room, and if the robots like to taunt you if you run away too early, and that's what happened right now. They said chicken, and then it showed a chicken chasing, being chased by a robot. Okay, we scroll down, little robot goes by, and the time, 5.37. And it goes, just scrolls back and forth, and here we can see the game again. So this, the green little humanoid, he is running around. If he takes too long, a yellow robot will appear, and he has to kill that. He has to shoot these red robots things in the middle of the screen. They're just obstacles. They're walls. Sometimes they break, sometimes they don't. The green guy can shoot in all four directions as it moves and take out the red guys. The red guys only look in one direction and they will fire if they see a human. And here we have an intermission because this is a clock after all, 537. Now the green guy is going... Oh, I hit the quit button. So I want to show you the next game, Worms. This clock that I built has about six games so far. So this is something like Nibbler. It's uh, There's three characters or three players going. They just go around. They avoid the green things. If there's a red dot... Oh, look, a chicken being chased by a giant worm. How clever. 5.38. Every 30 seconds or so, the time will scroll past. And then the game will resume play. If they pick up a red dot, they go faster and get longer. If they run into their own tail or someone else's tail, they blow up. Just like that. Two lives left. Or actually not. Uh, this is the f second level. Depending on the game, the number has a different meaning. It might mean how many lives are left or how many... How many screens are left. Levels. And a chicken chasing a little worm. 538. And here the purple one is on its own. And it's going to go faster and faster. Pick up red dots and go faster and faster. And then it got stuck. One level left. These guys are zipping along quite nicely. The speed is, of course, adjustable. Now, for my kids' benefit, I named each worm with a different name. So that was Isaac. Isaac won. Game over. Now we're going to play Dot Invaders. So this is Space Invaders, but for the Raspberry Pi. And there's a little alien who goes by, drags the time with him. Another alien, and the time. Level 2. Actually, no, in this case, it is two lives left. Spaceship drops a human on the planet. And the human waits for the armada to appear. And then it starts firing. The armada moves all as one unit. Each one of them inside can drop a bomb. Only two of the enemy bombs can be on the screen at the same time. Only one of the human's bombs or missiles gets to be on the screen at the same time. Every now and then a UFO will go across the top. Three lives left. Here we go. The level starts over. Remember, this is a clock. It's now 5.40. Eastern Standard Time. I programmed the little human to try to stay near the middle, but he has to also avoid incoming targets, or incoming objects, missiles. There goes the UFO on the top. He's worth a random number between 50 and 300 points, just like the real game. If they get too close to the bottom, boom, nuke goes off. Human dies. Here we go. Level 5. And again, the time comes across. So this program is written in Python. It's about 12,000 lines of code right now. There's a lot going on. A large chunk of that code is for a game I'm still working on. I won't 
be including it in this demo because it's just not ready to show yet. Here's Light Dot. This is like Tron Motorcycles or Light Cycles. Let's see how we go here. Fade effect. Time. And I hit the quit button. Sorry, folks. Can't show you that one. But we'll go to the next game. Or maybe we'll just end. Let's see what we do here. Blue won that round. Maybe I'll show you an analog clock. At nighttime, because this is such a bright device, and if it's in a child's bedroom or even in your own bedroom, you don't want the light blaring all night long. Oh, okay, so we're going to do this game. This game is Space Dot. I was just going to say I have an analog clock that will show up if you, pro if you uh, select that option. And it goes quite dim. And there's no action, so it's very, very pleasant. So here we have the planet and the humanoid. If you've ever played the Intellivision Astro Smash, that's what inspired this game. There goes a little thing dropping. An asteroid. Ships go back left and right. And missiles fall out of the sky. This human has a lot of AI in it. He avoids, he hunts, hangs out near the middle. I tried to create it to give it the appearance of being controlled by human and not just programmed. The green ship is like a mother ship. And when it gets mad, it starts... Oh, it got him. First shot. It'll stop dropping red bombs real quick. Sometimes the objects on the screen don't disappear when they should. So that's just a bug that needs to be fixed. And the three ships go by, pulling the time behind them. I like to think those are uh, Star Destroyers. Let's see. He's waiting. Oh, go, go. Shoot. Got him. There's no real end to this game, other than if he loses three of his lives. There goes that green ship. See him dropping multiple bombs? The bombs can be shot out of the sky, though. Interlude. This is a clock, after all. And no, the games are not playable. They're just watchable. This is a curiosity clock. It's entertaining. It's mesmerizing. Kids just sit around it and stare at it. They love it. The possibilities are endless. So much more than just rainbow blinking lights. I programmed sprites, 3D, uh, sorry, not 3D, but animated sprites, frames of animation, scrolling, maps, maps bigger than the screen, and I think this is probably the end. Oh, there's the, there's the clock. I want you to see the analog clock. So as I was recording it, it was 540-ish. So at the very top of the screen in the center is 12, 6 is at the bottom, 3 and 9 are on the sides. The little purple light going indicates the second hand. Now it, it flashes each second. You can't quite see it all the time on the camera due to the frame rates. It'll move every 2 point some seconds because there's 28 blocks it has to move around in one minute. But I made it also blink. And I just manually triggered the digital time to show up as well. And once it goes past the minute mark, oh, it went back to the game. Sorry, folks. So this is a working prototype. I have some menu commands. I'm trying to quit the game. It's not really letting me do it. So I'll probably just hit control and end the terminal session right now. But I do love this analog clock. The screen is big enough to show one digit. But I also wanted to give a representation of the minutes. That's what the blue dots on, along the outside, they represent the minutes. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll give you some updates soon.